chapter number 9, verse 18. Are you there, somebody? I'm going to read it from the NIV very quickly. And it says, while he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Then Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Number 20. Just then a woman who had been subject to, to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Hallelujah. I want to repeat it for you. There is something there that you are going to see. You have not gotten it yet, but you get it just now. I'm starting from 20. It says, just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. Number 23, you're about, to, you're about to get what is about to happen here. When Jesus entered the ruler's house, he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd. He said, go away. He said what? I can't hear you. That one is for your grandmother. I can't hear you. I, 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You are telling your poverty what? You are telling that sickness what? You are telling that disappointment what? That spirit of death what? He said go away. Go away! The girl is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. Am I talking to somebody here? This is something that happens very significant. It says a ruler came up to Jesus Christ eh? and knelt before him and says, my, my daughter is just what? Died. But come and put your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up immediately and went with him. And so did his disciples. I want to talk just for a few minutes about, about people that are going to be on the, on the 23rd verse. A man comes before Jesus Christ. And then he says, Master, my Lord, my daughter has just died. But I know you have got the ability and the power to resurrect him. And then Jesus says, take me where your daughter is. And they, go, and they got up and his disciples followed him. And it says, as they were going, as they were on their way to the ruler's house, a woman came across Jesus and the disciples. Not that this woman was coming to see Jesus or Jesus was going to see the woman. The woman was somewhere, but by virtue of the ruler, the ruler who said, come, my daughter has died. That woman was able to meet Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? He says, what? now a woman came behind and said, if I only touch the home of his cloak, I will be healed. Other versions will say, Jesus, when the woman touched, Jesus felt power leave him. Am I talking to somebody here? And then he turned around, then he says, who touched me? Then he looked at the woman and he says, woman, your faith has healed you. This woman had no intention of seeing Jesus. She met Jesus by default. It does not say that this woman was going to meet Jesus, was going to where Jesus was. Jesus had been somewhere, and then a ruler took him from where he was because of a person who had died. He said, let us go and heal my daughter. Am I talking to somebody? Tonight being in this place, you came here, you came here 
you came here not expecting to think that something can happen in your life. But let me tell you that there is a ruler that has drawn Jesus Christ. Aye, 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 aye. There is somebody who has drawn Jesus. He says Jesus Christ left with his disciples when he was taught to come. Am I communicating? Now, when they were doing it, that is when they met the woman. And the woman says, this is my chance. This is my opportunity. I'm going to take it. I'm going to be healed right now. I wasn't meeting this guy. I don't know this guy. I don't even know what, what is up. But all I know is that this man has got power to heal me. He must heal me. That is the mentality you must have in tonight's service. Yes. That is the mentality somebody here must have in tonight's service. I did not know. I did, look, I don't know Prophet Ed. But all I know is that Jesus Christ is here. All I need is, I just need to touch the home. I just need a little faith. I just need a little faith to activate, to get whatever I've come here for. It says, as soon as the woman, my preaching is going to be very, very short because I feel like I need to do a lot of deliverance. He says, as soon as the woman touched, Jesus says, you are healed. And after healing, Jesus continues to the ruler's house. So the woman got healed by default. On, the, on her agenda for the day, she wasn't expecting for healing to meet Jesus. She met Jesus Christ because somebody drew Jesus out from where he was. Some of us, we came here today. We were not expecting to get what we have gotten. But because there is a prophet in the house who is drawing the presence. Ah. That is why I declared at the beginning that by force, by fire, you shall receive your testimony. When he got to the ruler's house upon getting there, he says there were those who were playing flutes and making noise, making co commotion. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, go away. There are people who are, be, who are, who are very quick to announce, who are quick to make noise about, about struggles that you are going through. Am I talking to somebody here? In the Bible, the, the name of the woman with the issue of blood is not known. But she has got fame, fame for being known as the woman with the issue of blood. Is that her name? The world announced there. She was being announced that this woman, for 12 years she has been bleeding. That people had forgotten her name. So she was now known by a situation, not by her name. Her situation was announcing her, not her name. We, there are people here. Your situation is announcing you, yet your name has not been spoken. When people are making an example of people who are poor, they said, ah, you are still fine. Do you know that boy? And then, you know, there are times when poverty is upon you. That when they say, do you know that boy? That one who says, which one? You say, ah, you, you'll be complaining. Ah, me, I'm poor. Things are difficult. Ah, things are hard. Things are hard. And they say, ah, things are not hard. Do you know that boy, that one who's like that one? You say, ah, that one. Hey, I'm poor. But that one is poor. Your situation announces you. You know, we had, we had, we had, growing up, we had an, an, a, an uncle. We called him Chirenji. Hallelujah. So we grew up in the rural, in the rural area there, so we'd go there. Every day we would cook with vegetables. My mother would cook with vegetables, rape, spinach, cabbage. You will not come. You will not be there. You will not be seen. And my mother, the day my mother would say, today I'm cooking with chicken. And you know, it's like this guy had a sixth sense. Because my mother would not kill the chicken in the afternoon or in the public place. You know what my mother would do? She would go behind the kitchen at night when there is darkness and kill it. 
and then she will make sure that she removes the feathers in the house. And then when, the, when it's being cooked like that, you would slowly hear the gate quack. <laughs> and then you would enter. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. You would see the, the, the facial expressions of everyone in the house saying, ah. <laughs> Where were you when we were eating rape? Where were you when we were eating spinach? Okay, you do like that. You get chicken and then there is leftover. The next day, you come and make sure that the one that was leftover is finished. <laughs> then mom goes again to the garden and gets cabbage. You don't see him. Three weeks doing cabbage. You don't see him. And the carpenter. You don't see him. That one day, when mom says, you are now cooking. That is when you hear the gate again. Quack. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. He, he got so famous among us that we forgot his name. And his situation began to announce him. He was known because of the situation, of his circumstance. Of the way he would just appear from nowhere. Magically. Am I communicating with somebody? We don't even know what the name of the woman was. But she's just known as, she, she's referred to as the woman with the issue of blood. A situation announced here. For 12 years, people had seen her in, in, in a constant state for 12 years. That, that constant state had overridden her name. When you have got a nickname for so long, people tend to forget your real name. You say, ah, this one, what's this one? It's because your, your nickname has overridden your real name because it has been spoken about for far too long. Situations are speaking on behalf of us, yet our names are saying something else. Am I communicating with somebody? Now there is somebody who has got a situation that is speaking on behalf of her, and she meets Jesus Christ by default, not because she was fasting. She just met Jesus Christ on his way to somewhere else, and she got a testimony. What about you who came here today who has been fasting and you've been praying? Do you think you are going to escape the anointing of God in this place? It is a lie. By fire, by force, I declared and I decreed. You are receiving your own testimony. You are receiving your own testimony. After receiving it, Jesus Christ continues on his own journey. It is like the issue of, of legion. They say, Anzi, Anzi legion. That was not his name. Do you know that? They say, they, ah, his name, that guy, his name was Legion. It wasn't his name. Jesus Christ asked the Spirit. And the Spirit says, we are, we are Legion, for we are many. That man could be called John. That man could have been called Reuben. We don't know. Jesus Christ says, who are you? And the Spirit, the, the spokesman of the Spirit spoke up. And said, what have you to do with us, son of man? If you come to torment us, it is not yet time. Then Jesus says, who are you? Says, we are, um, I, I am legion. For we are many. What is a legion? Many. Am I communicating with somebody? Now, he is known as legion, but that was not his name. His situation is announcing him. Even after he's delivered, I still think people are still calling him Legion. After he'd received his own deliverance, people were still calling him, ah, Legion. His situation was still announcing him, even after. Even after his own deliverance, up to now, still Christians now today, they still are calling him Legion. 
So you can, you can have a name that can announce you for generations. You can have a situation that can change, a situation that can become a name that can announce you for generations upon generations. You can have one lifestyle that you can start today. One lifestyle. That lifestyle will be your name. Some of my friends started drinking alcohol as a hobby, as a pastime. So I want to see how it tastes like. And they continue doing it in the presence of people. And they inherited names of drunkards. Up to today, they are called drunkards. When my mother talks about them, and says, ah, those drunkards. But this one is called so and so and so, but now they're being referred to as drunkards. Their situation is announcing them. You started sleeping around and, and enjoying yourself, going to party. Hey, party. Hey, what, what, Shumaya. Shumaya, hey, hey, hey. Every night. It was a hobby. You were enjoying yourself. But there are people who were seeing and they saw the situation and that situation became your name. Now you are referred to as a party goer. A prostitute. Any man who wants to take you seriously, they don't take you seriously. They want to say, ah, who's that girl? You say, ah, don't you know this one? This one, these are party girls. They don't know your real nature, that you are a very sweet and loving, kind, sweet girl who would make a very wonderful wife one day. They cannot see it. Why? There is a name that is now speaking above your own name. Today, I cancel every name that is speaking above your name. I cancel every name that is speaking louder than your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they are calling you, whatever they are calling your family, that this family is a family of poor people, this family is a family of sick people, this family is a family of people who are limited, this family is a, is a family of people who are always in jail, this is a family of drunkards. Today I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. I say today I cancel it in the name of Jesus. May you be known by your real name in the name of Jesus. May you be known by your real name in the name of Jesus. Favor is your real name in the name of Jesus. Grace is your real name in the name of Jesus. Miracle is your real name in the name of Jesus. Promotion is your real name in the name of Jesus. Healing is your real name in the name of Jesus. Receive it wherever you are. 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 Any name that is speaking against itself on your life, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Whether it be in your marriage, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Whether it be in your womb, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Whether it be in your finances, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Whether it be in your ministry, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I said I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Receive it wherever you are. So the woman meets a miracle by default. It does not say she had been praying. She just met a miracle. Today, look, look at the amount you have, been, you have prayed. And you think you can just leave this service like that. You are joking, my friend. Refuse some certain things. And say, ah, man of God, I have prayed. Ah, no, 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 uh -uh, uh -uh. no, God, me, I have prayed. There are times I go before God when I don't get an answer about something. When I don't get an answer about something, do you know what I do? Sometimes I go before God, I say, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no. The way, the response I'm getting is not matching the amount of prayer and fasting I've put inside. The way I'm getting this response, no. I've prayed too much. God, you know I've prayed. You don't have to be silent. And God always says, oh, yeah, you have prayed. Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. What about you who have prayed? After the woman then receives a testimony, 
Jesus continues and goes to the house and sees that people are already announcing the death. You know that there are, so, there are some people who are gifted to announce somebody's downfall, to announce somebody's pain. They are always looking at you to see what they can start to announce. Eh? Yeah? They look at your shoe when you come to church. In church, we call the monitoring spirits. You know monitoring spirits? That group of women. Eh? After service, they go outside church and say, did you see what sister and so-and-so was wearing? Eh, hey, in church. Hey, that one. Did you see how she was looking at your husband? Ah, that one. Those are called the monitoring spirits. While other people are praying, they are busy monitoring. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. There are people who are gifted in announcing somebody's poverty. If you ever had somebody describe your poverty, you think it's a, it's a job description. You think if I, if I put this on, on a paper and they present it as a CV, I might get a job. That one who has never bought a single bicycle. He has never even bought, he, doesn't, he can't even afford his own shoes. When he walks by, when he walks by, even poor people run away from him. When they begin to announce the, your situation, you actually think it is actually something good. You know how somebody will begin to announce a, a woodcutter. You know, someone who cuts wood for a living. They come to you and, and begin to say, hey, sh the way you cut wood, the way you hold the X <laughs> with the grip, and the way you cut the tree from this angle to that angle to this angle, and the way you know, you can interpret that the tree is about to fall. You just do it and it falls, and the way you just cut the, the logs very quickly, Man, you are gifted. You, you actually think, you begin to think it's a talent. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's limitation. There was a guy who used to sell vegetables when we were growing up. He, he had a bicycle. He used to sell rap. No, do you know, do you, do you know rap? You no. Know, rap. So he had a bicycle where it had a huge stand. So he'd put bundles and bundles of red vegetables inside. And he'd begin to what? To go around the neighborhood selling. He would be selling it, he'd be on the bicycle, and then he'd be going, Rappy! Rappy and carrots! You know, you would do it so stylishly that he would all run outside the outside and begin to follow his bicycle. Hey! After a while, he inherited the name called Mr. Repi. He was called Mr. Repi. When, when people were saying, we are no longer seeing him, and there was rumor that he had died, they said, so how will we begin to find you? He said, what do you mean? He says, nobody knows his name. But this is the same person who was selling you rape vegetables for the past 20 years. But you don't even know his real name. You know him by job description. That is a curse upon somebody's life. That is an error that always needs to be fixed. Your situation cannot announce you. Everybody has got a name. Everybody has got a mandate that God has given them. Your name should speak louder. I remember I was growing up, there was a, a musician in Zimbabwe. His name was called Edwin Hammer. He used to sing very good music and everybody loved it. And I grew up because my name is Edwin. I inherited a nickname of called Edwin Hammer. And I loved it because this guy was popular. Somebody's name was speaking for me and I loved it. In church, there is a girl, her name is called uh, Magaya. <laughs> so 
So I, I asked a very I simple question. I said, are you related? He says, no. I said, you're not related? He says, no. I said, but you tell people that you are related? He says, yes. <laughs> when they ask what's your name, you say, I'm a guy. I said, oh, you are related? He says, yes, it's my uncle. <laughs> there are people that way, they ask him and say, when, when they hear my surname, people always ask my surname, eh? Because people always know, you know me as Prophet Ed. He said, what is his surname? You shall prophesy it. Hallelujah. When they hear my surname, there are people who I don't even know them, but they're busy going around town and saying, ah, that one is my cousin. I say, oh yeah? From where? I have, I have made a name and people want to capitalize on that name. Everyone here, you have got your name that God, you, God must make it manifest to bring results for you. Your name. Bill Gates. If you've got, if you've got somebody called Gates, you automatically assume they are of the Gates lineage. Hallelujah. If someone comes here and they say, "I am Peter Zuma," you start to look at the structure of the head and say, "Does the head?" Mushinwa, mushinwa, our answer, mushinwa. Yet they might not even know who Zuma is. Because somebody made a name. Am I talking to somebody here? There is a guy in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe. His name is, is Silas. So I'm, 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 I'm being introduced. Uh, Silas, how are you? I'm fine. He's Shona even. Silas, how are you? I said, ah, Silas. Then when, when I said Silas, I looked at him in the realm of the spirit. Then I saw Julius. Your juju here. Then I, 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 I just said, it wasn't a service. It was a business meeting. Then I said, why am I seeing Julius? He says, Julius, I said, that guy from South Africa. He says, ah, my name is uh, Silas Malema. <laughs> I looked in the realm of spirit. Then I looked at the angel. Then I said, you, so you even angel, you, if you want to speak, you look for somebody who possesses that name who is famous. To speak about somebody else who's there. Which means an angel is not seeing you. You do look for somebody who has already made a name for themselves to announce you. It is time for somebody here to announce their own name. Ay, ay, ay. When they hear your name, when they hear that your name is Siphon, when they know that your name is Peter. When your name is John, when it is mentioned anyway, let everybody think of you. May everybody want to be associated with your name. Am I communicating with somebody here? There are people who are gifted in announcing. They were announcing the death of the girl. They were busy blowing flutes. And Jesus came and said, these people they know the signs and they interpret and they begin to celebrate. There are people who know when things are not going well in your marriage. When things are not going well in your business. You say nowadays he doesn't drive his car. He's now using public transport. You see things are not well. They go around the whole neighborhood telling each and everyone. Every Tom, Dick and Harry must listen, must hear your story. They are gifted in announcing. It's the case with Joseph and his brothers. They knew. And they could interpret that this boy is going somewhere. There are people who are gifted. They can announce. Jesus gets there and the people are already celebrating. Announcing. Then Jesus says, why are you announcing somebody's anguish? Go away. And then the Bible says, after everyone had been put away, Jesus went inside and brought the girl to life. Am I communicating with somebody? We want to put away every voice. Ah, Zuga Badeleba. Every voice. Every voice. Every voice that has been announcing your poverty. God is going to silence it by prosperity. You 
you are not, you are not hearing me. Every voice that has been announcing your leg, God is going to sil silence it by abundance. Your bank account is about to receive a testimony. I'm seeing 14 people after this service smiling all the way to the bank. There are 14 people leaving tonight's service all the way to the bank smiling. Look, you cannot teach a fish how to swim. It is born in water. It, it is right to swim. It knows everything about swimming. I cannot begin to teach you about prosperity and teach you about prosperity. It is your right. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not hearing me. Poverty is not your DNA. When God looks at you, he does not look, he, he's not seeing something fragile and something small. He's seeing something great. That is why when everybody looks at me and says, you know, I, 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 people look at me and say, Prophet Ed, that small boy. I always say, where? Hmm? Which one? Where? Who are you calling small? Because you are 50 years old, you, you can call me small. I'm older than you, yet you are 50. The day you were born, I was there. I told somebody came up and says, ah, you, you are, ah, that means what? You are a small boy. I said, me? I looked at him. I said, how old are you? He goes, ah, ah, well, me, I'm 54. I said, you are 54? He said, yes. I said, I know, sir, I'm older than you. He says, no, you are young. You are a small boy. To be doing this work, ah, you are a small boy. I said, no, sir, you are the small boy. To be doing the work you are doing, you are a small boy. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, do you know? The day, the day, the day your mother gave birth to you, I was there. I was watching your mother giving birth to you. Matter of fact, the day you were conceived, when your, your mother and your father met your father in Chitungwiza there and slept together, I was there. Matter of fact, the day your mother was born, I was there. Who is older, me or you? He says, what do you mean? I said, were you not born on such and such a day? He says, yes. He said, I was there. Your mother was born in the year 1932. I was there. I am older than you a billion times. That is why you see, always see people always, uh, when, when people, when God opens their eyes, and people say, I want to know who Prophet Ed is. Do you know what God does to them? He shows them me in the spirit. Me in the spirit, I am a very old man. I've got a white hair and white beard. And I'm wearing, you know, like white garment with a stick. So most people would see there and say, Prophet Ed, I'll start off as a young boy and then I'll change into the old man. You know, like, you know, like biblical, like the way the, uh, the uh, Old Testament people used to wear. That is what I look like. So people always they say, ah, why do we always dream you as an old man? I say, because a prophet carries an old spirit. That is why a prophet will come and tell you what happened in the year 1964, yet they were not yet born. The spirit they carry is an old spirit. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. Every contrary name that people had been announcing you with, God, is giving, God, God has told me that I should do a prayer for everybody here. Amen. Everybody must live with a new name. A new era, a new generation, a new dimension to see and experience. That's the ministry of Prophet A. This young prophet has the powerful and true word for all the seasons of your life. Contact us today 
for the Prophet's resources and itinerary by the information on your screen.